Hey, super legends, superheroes, and superstars, you're tuned into Hot Hire, which is the number one place if you're looking to get into your job in a double quick time. So, today, mm, well, I'm so excited. So, this next guest, actually, not even a guest, a super legend, we're actually connected in a private group. I can't tell you too much about it. But this guy is a seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven time world champion. He's a business and leadership coach, but not just at any level, at CEOs, high achievers, and entrepreneurs. And I absolutely love his content that he puts out on social media because he is just, just dropping knowledge bombs. So I want to say a huge, massive welcome to James. Lachlan, how are you, buddy? Hey, Dre. So good to connect with you, brother. Yeah, you too, man. I like, really appreciate you, you coming on. No, well, you know, I'm very honored to be on. I've been following what you do for a long time because I am working with these CEOs and leaders, and they're always looking at hiring and how they hire better. And so I always try and get your content, share it with them, get them to connect. So what you do is amazing, and I'm really glad that you do what you do. All right, straight back at you. What you do is amazing, so. Hey, Super Legends, so sorry to interrupt the show. If you do like what you're seeing, please don't forget to like, comment, and share. Thank you. Yeah, so I'm living in New Zealand. I've been here for 15 years, but I grew up in a very small town in the north of Ireland. And around the age of nine years old, but you're nine or 10, I lifted a set of drumsticks. And the reason I lifted them was because I was frequenting my headmaster's office, the school headmaster. And uh, for all the wrong reasons, I was like a little troublesome nine-year-old, full of fire. I don't of believe you, I don't believe you. <laughs> oh, totally. I didn't know when to close this thing, right? I didn't know what these things were for. So I was in his office all the time. And at one point, he was like, okay, enough's enough. No more detentions for you. I thought, great, no more punishment. This sounds great. He said, here's a set of drumsticks. What? Is it you're going to go and meet a drum teacher after school on a Tuesday, and you're going to learn to drum. And that's what you're going to do instead of go to detention. How does that sound? Sounds like the perfect punishment for me. <laughs> Sounds terrible. So I went along, met this gentleman. He was like my grandfather's age, really soft, gentle. And I really respected him. And he was really amazing with me. He helped me learn the basics of drums. Then my personality kicked in. And that was that I'm very like focused, very driven, very competitive. And so I started practicing a little bit more than the other people that were learning with me. It was a group lesson. And because I wanted to be a little bit further down the track. And in that competitive nature started to compound so within two or three years i was 13 i went to the world solo drumming championships never had been before didn't know any idea what it was about went for fun ended up winning the thing in the juvenile grade had no idea what had happened went back the next year did the same again then things started to like snowball so i got phone calls from new zealand from canada i was in my mid-teens these pipe bands offering me an opportunity to go and travel to their country. So Vancouver, Canada was the first place that I got to go to, lived there for six years, was really fortunate to learn so much from the amazing people there and went on to win another uh, five world titles on top of that. So cool. Man. Then I came back to New Zealand. Now, oh, thanks, man. Now, I feel very, very fortunate. You know, there's, um, there's a lot that goes into it, but, you know, you're up against people who are phenomenal players. So there's a big respect thing. So when you do get you get honored with that title. It's a, it's a big honor, really. So I feel fortunate to have learned some tools along the way. So when I was in my teens and learning about competing, I was also studying the psychology. So I came across this crazy wild guy called Tony Robbins. And it was an old cassette tape. And I was like, what on earth? This looks so cheesy. What is this? So I plugged the cassette in and I was like, this is my guy. This is amazing. So I'm listening to this as a young teenager. I'm reading... Uh, the Inner Game of Music, an uh, amazing book around um, the, the psychology of performing and dealing with nerves and performance pressure. So I started to build up this psychological aspect of performance and success and failure, and then started to apply that as a drummer. And moved down to New Zealand to teach at a private school. I, I was about 19, I got offered a position to teach at um, a private school in Christchurch and to run their drumming program of all things. So going from the kid that was in the headmaster's office for being a, a little disaster to then teaching in a school, it was quite funny, quite the turnaround. Yeah. So a pretty amazing opportunity. And I got to develop things there. I started a, a retail business while I did that. I started an online education company for drummers as well. And then 
a few things happened in life that threw me a, a spanner in my work. So two of those things were pretty major things for me. One was the 2011 earthquake in Christchurch, uh, which destroyed most of the city. It shut the city down for a couple of months. Uh, many people were killed. The aftershocks were constant. It was like post-traumatic stress. And then shortly after that, um, traversed a miscarriage. And those two things totally, totally shook my world. Like my mindset was crushed. My motivation was crushed. I was drinking too much alcohol. I was eating crap food. I was sleeping in the mornings. I was letting people down, including myself. So I got some leverage. I hit a low point. It's like enough's enough. So I started looking at getting myself a coach, getting someone that could lead me in the right direction. Started to get really engaged in the whole mindset of coaching for success and looking at positive psychology. So I went and got um, certified with the International Coaching Federation, attended the Tony Robbins Life and Wealth Mastery and all of his different events. It was just brilliant. Got some amazing personal coaches and started leveling up and decided actually that's where I want to be. I don't want to be uh, teaching in the school system for the rest of my life, although I've enjoyed it. I thought, you know what? I want to transition. I, I want to serve people. And I want to work with leaders and athletes and everyday people that want results. So that's how I got to, I guess, where I am today. Uh, uh, just one. So I'm really curious. Just one quick question. So for someone to be a world champion drummer, how often do you have to practice? Because that's discipline. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Well, great question. So if I go back, Dre, to when I was, uh, say, 13, uh, it would have been a typical weekday would have been anywhere between three to six hours of practice on top of school and all that stuff. And then on the weekend, I used to count and time myself. It would have been 16 hours at least, 16, maybe at most 20 hours across a weekend where I'd just be practicing. I had, my hands were bleeding. I had RSI in my teenage years. I had carpal tunnel symptoms. I had all these problems because I was just so focused and there was so much commitment to it. So it's not something I guess that just, hey, you're born as a good drummer or you're born as an athlete, like all things, it's the hours that you put in that 10,000 hour rule really applies. You know, to practice. All right, Arthur, I've got so many questions, but I know that we don't have enough time today. So like, do you have any valuable you know, tips that you can share with the audience? Yeah, so I guess with your audience, I guess you've got both people who are looking for dream jobs and you've also got people who are hiring and trying to find the right people. Yeah, that's right, both sides, yeah. So I would say that the, the big thing, you know, that I'd love to share is, you know, culture is everything and people don't leave crap jobs. They leave toxic cultures. And the more people that I work with that are in the, the CEO levels dealing with multi-million dollar companies, we talk about, okay, who's your next hire? What did you learn from the last hire that was great? What did you learn that really wasn't good and you don't want to replicate that? And the one thing that keeps coming up is that, don't hire for skills, hire for fit. Hire for the fit. You know, skills can be taught. Anybody can learn skills. So many people are coming out with no work experience and they've got some skills, but they're not being looked at because they've no work experience. So we can't look at you, but you know what? Look at what they do in their life. Are they a member of the team? Have they got amazing skills? Have they proven themselves in a different area? You know, for example, when I would apply for jobs, I'd always talk about my passion for drums. I would talk about some of the achievements and some of the lessons I learned in that area. That helped me get onto the ladder for my first couple of jobs without work experience. So I think for people who are hiring, look at who they are holistically and how they're going to fit into the team. I mean, you might have someone who um, knows how to take a business, scale it and sell it. And they might have done that with multi-billion dollar companies. But if they're not the right fit and they're full of ego and they don't know how to handle people or talk to people. They've got aggression problems. Is it worth the cost of having that person in your business? I don't think so. So I think it's super important to really hire for fit. And to do that, you've got to ask great questions. So I look at somebody who's interviewing. They have to be a coach. They're a coach. And what the great coaches do, they ask badass questions. The better the questions you ask, the more understanding you're gonna get around who this person is. And if you use a bit of the old FBI, uh, like terrorist negotiator tactics, a little bit of mirroring. So when you know, you've got your interviewee coming in chatting, just reflecting back a little bit about what they're doing, 
you know, they might say, hey, um, yeah, so I'm, I'm like super, super reliable and uh, really punctual. So that's maybe what the interviewee is saying. So I'd be saying, okay, super reliable and punctual. That's what I'd be saying as the interviewer. You want to go deep. You don't want to just take their one liner. You want to get them to justify. You want to get them to open up. You want to get them to get down to the emotional level. So keep mirroring the person that you're interviewing. Now, this goes for the interviewee as well. Mirror the people that are interviewing you. Ask them questions, but in a respectful way, in a curious way. And I think, you know, you can use your tone of voice to do that. Make sure that it is curious and not obnoxious or not, you know, overly confident. I think it's super important to hire for fit. Don't hire for skills. Skills can be taught. You can teach anybody to do anything if they're willing and they've got the right attitude. Oh, James. Oh, so I love the, the mirror, the matching, like leading pacing and yeah, all of that stuff. That's, yeah, that's what I share with my clients as well. So what do you have going on at the moment? Do you have any, you know, like, pro, like programs, projects? You know, what's, what's happening? What's exciting? I've got so many exciting things happening right now. So I've got my, my whole life on purpose approach and that's a podcast, it's an Instagram channel, it's a YouTube channel. So what I'm doing is I'm interviewing people who are high performers, they're amazing. And most of them are dads. So I'm writing a book on fatherhood and the connection between being really engaged dads and how that ends up impacting our future kids. Here in New Zealand, we've got the highest teen suicide rate on the planet. And so I think that there's a big connection between fatherhood and mental health for kids. And so I've been interviewing former prime ministers, uh, global billionaires and titans of industry, and talking to them about, okay, you've performed really high in your career. How have you done at home? And how have you managed to do both things? And what can you teach people about dealing with adversity on a global scale and how they can apply it uh, on a Monday morning scale, trying to get their kids to school? So that's one of my big projects. Working on this book, it's been amazing. And I'm also about to launch a monthly membership, Life on Purpose monthly membership. I've not actually told anybody else about it except for my own oh, coach. So you're the oh, first person yeah. to know about it. So <laughs> keep an eye. <laughs> I love it. So people can come check it out over at my Instagram channel. It's the easiest way to get a hold of me. Uh, James Laughlin, official. Best way to get, get in touch. Brilliant. Well, I'll make sure we put that at, at the bottom as well. So James, oh, it's about that time. Like, I guess I'd say this is like my favorite part of the um of the episode so do you have a dad joke for us to finish on well look i'm four years into this dad business and my dad jokes are still pathetic but i'm hoping by the time i'm like 70 they'll be a little less pathetic but hey um what do sprinters eat before they race <laughs> i don't know what a sprinter <laughs> say before they finish nothing they fast Mate, you're a legend. <laughs> hey, my... So good to connect, brother. Yeah, you too. I just want to say, James, like you've, oh man, just absolutely love everything that you do, all of your content, what you're sharing, like the knowledge that you've dropped, dropped today. So you're an absolute superstar. So I really appreciate you, mate. Oh man, right back at you, sending you nothing but love and best wishes. Cool, man. That was, yeah, that was awesome. Yeah, man. That yeah. was fun. Thanks for that. Oh, I was gonna. Oh, I was gonna say about your your book. When's that gonna be? Um, when's that gonna be out? That'll be out late next year.